Here is some teaching helps for the second week of Isaiah for our Come Follow Me. Hopefully there'll be some things that might help you out. Uh, the second week is Isaiah 13 and 14, Isaiah 24 through 30, plus chapter 35. Now, I want to show you what some of my teachers have done this past week that I think might give you some ideas and, and be helpful for you. So if we look here, this teacher had her students uh, take a doctrinal mastery scripture and literally um, draw it. Like, here's the reference, here's the words, what do you see? Draw it out. And the kids came up with some really good stuff, I feel, that they, they're seeing things. And when you're drawing it, you have to read the verse a little more closely than you would just brushing over it. This could be done in family home evening. This could be done in primary. This could be done in, in seminary institute. It could be done, really, adults could do it, too, and have a little fun with this. And I'll just show you a couple pictures, which, again, I thought was very good. Here's uh, Genesis 1. Uh, what does the student see in this scripture? And then here's another one. I mean, there's just some great things in here. A few other things that teachers have done are uh, create a meme. Here's one a student didn't create but found and shared. I like it even better when they create their own. Again, trying to here's me trying to lean under my own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5, and falling down the ladder. Uh, another one here is we shall find all precious substance we shall find we shall fill our houses with spoil you know my house proverbs 113 just fun uh, here's another one just a picture of a sloth as there is a scripture about a slothful man again there's a value when students create their own things their teacher said they just gave their students these little three by three post-it notes and they find quotes they find pictures or, or draw pictures on them and they'll place them in their journals or write in your scriptures. Uh, a great way to bring the scriptures and your journals to life with quotes and, and drawings and so forth. So there's some great things. So let's take a look at some things in this week's scripture reading that may be helpful and maybe dive a little bit into a, a few of these verses here. Uh, again, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 13 is the same thing that's found in 2 Nephi 23. But there's differences. And sometimes I think it's helpful to find these differences. On a personal note, uh, I, I've done the comparison. I've read the third Nephi or the second Nephi 23 account, and I've read the Isaiah 13, and I'm like, oh, what's different? What message does the Lord want to emphasize in the Book of Mormon that may be missing? I'll show you a few of those today uh, and uh, a few things that might be helpful. Uh, again, maybe you want your students to do that one day. I wouldn't do that every day, but okay, guys, I want half the room to read this, this Isaiah 13, the other half to read 2 Nephi 23. When a word's different, let's mention it. One person read, and then everyone follow along or whatever. Uh, let me just show you a couple things. For example, in Isaiah 13, verse 6, How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Now, stay there in Isaiah 13, verse 6. Now, I'm going to read 2 Nephi 23, verse 6. How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. What's the difference? The question is, is where is the destruction coming from? Look at that comparison. Maybe show, have half the kids read one verse, half the kids read the other verse, and say, okay, what's the difference? What did the Lord want to make sure was clear in the Book of Mormon that maybe wasn't in Isaiah? Another verse that I really like in, in uh, Isaiah uh, 13, verse, uh, verse 7. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Again, Isaiah adds the word and in the Book of Mormon doesn't. It says, therefore shall all hands be faint, every man's heart shall melt. So maybe here you ask, what melts? And, and we can just unpack this thought a little further in. Well, ice melts. Ice cream melts. Uh, what causes it to melt? Well, when the 
air temperatures warmer than what the substance is. So if a man's heart is melting, what's going on? Maybe the heat or the pressure from outside of the world is greater than what his heart has the capacity to do. Well, what causes, you know, this lack of bravery? I mean, what's going on here? And why can't men stand for truth and righteousness? You know, read a couple of the other verses and see what's going on here. Uh, bravery seems to be going away. When once maybe man would stand for truth and righteousness, they're not today. And maybe ask your kids why. Maybe just the, the public criticism, shaming, uh, public, I mean, social media is so, can be brutal that there's some people that, no, I'm not going to go out there and get stand for truth and righteousness. My heart, I'm not brave that way because I don't want to be picked on. How about Isaiah 13, verse 16? Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. That's not a pleasant verse. But again, it's talking about the destruction that took place and we know that this is a type of the destruction that's going to happen so maybe we can ask well here families are falling apart they're being dashed to pieces maybe ask how is our families falling apart in the world today what's causing them to fall apart how are they being dashed into pieces that's a question you can ask and start some good discussion let's go to Isaiah 14, and we'll just look at one verse. Well, it's the same as 2 Nephi 24. Um, boy, I really like verse 13. Notice the use of the pronoun I over and over and over and over. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my, th my throne. I will sit up also upon the mount of the congregation in the north. We have to be asking ourselves, okay, where's the Savior? Verse 14, I will ascend. I will be like the Most High. Uh, this is the adversary here. This is Satan, right? He is taking upon himself all of these I, 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 rather than the voice of the Savior who said, Thy will be done. Thy kingdom, thy glory. Well, verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. Again, Isaiah is talking about Satan here. And consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? In other words, when we see the uh, adversary, when we see Satan as he really is, We'll look upon him and say, surely this isn't the man that tempted and controlled the world. Uh, but I think we need to know a little bit about, uh, about Satan to understand his tactics. Let's find out who he really is. So in the Doctrinal Mastery Core document, 2.5 has a little bit of information about Satan. I would go there. I would mark it. I would have them tag it in their phone and create a tag for Satan and then link it to this verse and then ask, are there any verses in the scriptures that talk about who Satan is? Let's tag them so they're all linked so we can understand who we're going up against. I think that's a valuable activity. Let's go to chapter 20. Let's go all the way to chapter 29 now. This is an important one. Now, if you do a comparison with 2 Nephi 27 and Isaiah 29, they're very different. This is probably the two most contrasting chapters from Isaiah to the Book of Mormon. One, the verse order's wrong. Not wrong, they're just different. For example, 2 Nephi 27 starts with words different, and then it starts in verse 9. So where's Isaiah 29 verse 1? Well, half of the verses aren't even in there. Uh, 2 Nephi 27 is much longer, much more in-depth. So there's much in there. Uh, 
Again, if you read Isaiah 1, 1, it start, or Isaiah 29, 1, it starts out with Ariel. Now, if you check the footnote, we understand Ariel is the Hebrew, meaning the altar of God. It's referring to the city of Jerusalem. So when it says in verse 7, and the multitude of all the nations that fight against her and her munition. Who's her? Well, they're talking about Ariel. What's Ariel? It's Jerusalem. In the Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi 27, verse 3, they just make sure it's clear. And all the nations that fight against Zion and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. In other words, there's people that are going to attack Jerusalem, Zion, the throne of God. But in the long run, it'll be like a passing dream in the night. It's so insignificant. That doesn't mean it's not going to be powerful at the time when it happens, but in the long run, it'll be insignificant. So again, look at those. For example, between verse 10 and verse 11 in uh, in Isaiah 29, there's two full verses in 2 Nephi. Verses 6 and verses 7. I mean, there's a lot of verses missing. In fact, between verse 11 and... And verse 12, you have in the Book of Mormon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 verses. And that's just a sampling. There's a lot missing. So it may be wise to go to Isaiah 29 and have your students just put a link. Say, go to 2 Nephi 27. We're going to read that. Or if they're in paper scriptures, right at the top. Go to 2 Nephi 27. There's more there. And I would read that. And I'll give you a couple of activities. One, take a book and seal it. Because remember, there's the whole, this is all verse 7. How do you read a sealed book? You can't. Well, how do you seal a book? Well, take some duct tape to an old book and wrap it up tight and hand it to a kid and say, can you read this? Or do that, but make it so they can get op- open it up. And then have it in a different language. Pull out some other language of the Book of Mormon. Wrap it up in tape and say, read this. I can't open it. Help them open it and then have them read it. I mean, that's really what's going on here. In fact, it says in Isaiah that the things are sealed up in the latter days, right? The Book of Mormon adds the words, out of the ground, they'll be delivered. So there's some great things in there that you can see, and maybe, I don't know if it's possible if you're in a location where you can literally dig up and put a book in the ground or some gold plates. It's kind of a fun thing. Or symbolically have them write something and and have it come out of the ground. There's some great things in there. So that's chapter 29. I'll share maybe one more verse in here. that maybe is helpful uh, when they're reading uh, verse 3 and 4 uh, maybe go to Mormon 8 verse 23 you can read that and study that and, and see okay what's going on here uh, I would also ask this is the Isaiah you, you can look at the, the second Nephi account as well but in Isaiah 29 verse 11 what is the words of the book that is sealed who is the learned man? Who is not learned in verse 12? And then maybe go to Joseph Smith history and read uh, verse 65 about Charles Anthon and Joseph Smith. Uh, one is, and then maybe most importantly say, okay, what doctrine is being taught in this chapter? A book shall come forth out of the ground that is sealed that the learned can't read, but an unlearned can. It's the, it's the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So maybe open up that core document and let's read about the restoration. This is a great time to study the restoration. That's Isaiah chapter 29. Well, last couple things here. Uh, chapter 30, verse 9. I would probably just ask... Uh, I talk about rebellion. Is this a sin of ignorance versus a sin of rebellion? What's the difference? And then I would ask, 
how are people in the world rebellious today versus how are they just sinning in ignorance today? What does it make a difference for you and I who have made covenants? And then again, verse 19, even though they're rebellious, verse 19, he will be very gracious. How does the Lord feel about people who repent and, and come back to him? Uh, chapter 35 is also about the restoration. Uh, the desert shall bloom as a rose. That's a great phrase. Uh, if you, you can get a rose, bring a rose. And what does it take to make a rose grow? It takes water. Okay, now put that same rose in the desert. There's no water. How do you make a bloom, a rose bloom with no water? It takes a miracle. The restoration is a, is a miracle. And talk about the miracles of the restoration. Again, make sure you read the restoration today. Let's do one more thing. I'd go to Isaiah 26. I know this is going backwards, but I think Isaiah 26, I'll end with this one. In this case, I would probably ask uh, a question. And for seminary teachers who have the feasting bookmark, it's just the first question. What are some inspiring verses or phrases in this chapter? This would be great for a, a Relief Society, an Elders Quorum, a Sunday School class, um, a family. Guys, let's just read chapter 26. And whatever is inspiring, let's pause and mention it. And maybe they'll get to verse 4. Why is that? What's, what's the Savior teaching? What's Isaiah teaching in verse 4? Why is that important? How does that help you in your life? Uh, I would probably, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what verses they come up with. Verse 9, with my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. You know, why do we always, why do kids get scared at night? Because it's dark, they can't see there. Uh, there's... Why do we, in our darkness of our lives, seek the Savior? It's because we don't see Him. And there's other things around us that we see or we feel, that whether they're real or not, right? But we see them and feel them. Uh, I also like 19. What doctrine is being taught in verse 19? Again, this is all Isaiah 26. Dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Again, what basic doctrine is this teaching? It's, it's This is the resurrection. Uh, you could look at several different places about the resurrection. So Isaiah is teaching some fabulous things. Again, there's lots of different ways to teach it. Uh, maybe I've given you a few ideas. There's lots of songs that go with what we're reading in Isaiah. Uh, whether it's Handel's Messiah, which I heard in a class this past week. There's Handel's Messiah in this week's reading. Uh, there's hymns in this week's reading. Uh, there's lots of different ways to teach, and hopefully you're having some fun learning what Isaiah is teaching us. Have a great week.